Hello everyone. In the last tutorial, we have learned about instance initialization block, right? In this tutorial, we are going to learn about constructor overloading, okay? But to understand about constructor overloading, you should know about what is a constructor, how to create a constructor, how to call a constructor and types of constructor, okay? And I have covered all these points in a Java constructor tutorial. You can check it out on a link that I have mentioned in a description of this video. So please first watch that video so that you can get a clear view about constructor overloading in java so let's begin and these are the points that we are going to discuss what is constructor overloading purpose of constructor overloading and at the end we will see example okay now see here overloading means more than one right so simply keep in mind constructor overloading means having more than one constructor in a class and we know that basically constructor is used for objects initialization that means we can give values to an object field using constructor in java now question comes that why do we need more than one constructor if we can initialize an object with single constructor that means it is enough to have a single constructor in a class to initialize an object that already we have discussed in java constructor tutorial okay so why do we need a constructor overloading in java what is the purpose behind it okay so let's understand with an example now let's imagine if you have a cake shop okay so first customer came into your shop and order for banana cake of 1 kg so here cake has two properties or we can say fields name of cake and weight of cake okay after some time second customer came into your shop and order for chocolate cake of 2 kg with rectangle shape okay so here cake has three fields the name of cake weight of cake and shape of cake okay so after some time third customer came into your shop and order for circle shaped strawberry cake of 2 kg with mango flavor so here cake has four fields name of cake weight of cake shape of cake and flavor of cake now see here this is banana cake this is chocolate cake and this is strawberry cake okay so here all are cake but each cake has different fields and due to different fields each cake has different structure or we can say each cake has different form so basically we can make a cake in a different form similarly in java we can create an object in a different form and it is possible only because of constructor overloading now let's think as a programming point of view now let's imagine if you have a software company and thousands of employees are working there and you want to keep record of basic information of all those employees okay suppose for employee 1 you decide to add two properties or we can say fields and its employee name and employee id okay but later you want to add one more field and its designation of employee okay so here employee 2 has three fields employee name employee id and designation of employee okay but again in a future you decide to add one more field and its address of employee so that you can provide them pick up and drop service okay so here employee 3 has two fields and its employee name and employee address okay now see here employee 1 has a different fields employee 2 has a different fields and employee 3 has a different fields and due to different fields each employee object has different form same as that of cake that we have discussed earlier so in this way we can create an employee object in different form now here each employee object has different fields right and each field has its specific values and we can give values to the fields of an object that means we can initialize an object by using constructor in java so here to initialize employee one object we need to create constructor with parameters employee name and employee id okay and to initialize employee two object we need to create another constructor with parameters employee name employee id and designation of employee and to initialize employee three object we need need to create one more constructor with parameters employee name and address of employee so here we have created this constructor for those employees whose only name and id we want okay and this constructor we have created for those employees whose name id and designation we want and this constructor we have created for those employees whose only name and address we want so here we have created total three constructor with different parameters and having more than one constructor in a class with different parameters is nothing but the constructor overloading so basically constructor overloading is a technique in which class can have more than one constructor with different parameter list 
okay now let's do it practically first we need to create employee class to create an employee object so let's create employee class okay class employee okay and after that let's define basic properties or fields of employee so basic fields of employees might be employee name and employee id and we can define fields by declaring variables so we can write like this okay now let's create an employee object inside main method so here we are going to create employee object okay suppose uh, employee 1 equals to new employee now let's print employee name and employee id using println method and println method is used to print output on a screen okay so we can write like this stem dot out dot print ln and here employee one name okay name and here employee one dot name okay same we can write for employee id now let's run the code Now see here employee one object is create with fields employee name and employee ID right with default values null and zero. Okay. So here null and zero are the default values given by default constructor. And what is default constructor? We have already discussed in Java constructor tutorial. So here null and zero are useless values, right? So here we have to give valid values to an employee and we can give values to an object using constructor right so let's create constructor in a class so here we need to create parameterized constructor because we have to give values to an employee object and we can give values by passing parameters to the constructor and hence we need to create parameterized constructor okay so we can create like this employee here string employee underscore name okay and then int employee id okay and here employee name equals to employee underscore name okay same we can write for employee id okay so in this way we can create parameterized constructor with parameters employee name and employee id and here we need to pass values as a parameter which we have to give to an object fields okay so here name suppose abc okay and then employee id suppose 301 so whenever employee one object create then this constructor get call and invoke this parameterized constructor and values will assign to an employee one object okay now let's run the code okay now see here we got an expected output so here employee one name is abc okay and employee one id is 301 now let's create one more employee object okay and it's suppose employee two okay so here new employee and here and here for employee 2 i want to add employee name and suppose pqr okay and then employee id suppose 305 okay and here i want to add one more parameter and it's designation of employee okay so it's suppose senior software engineer so here we have passed three parameters employee name employee id and designation of employee okay and for that we need to create one more constructor with parameters that will match to these parameters because when this line will execute then compiler get called this constructor and look matching for this parameter list of constructor okay and if compiler won't get same parameter list of constructor in a class then compiler raise an error
and program won't compile. So basically, Java compiler differentiate constructor that have to invoke based on the number of the parameter list and their types. Otherwise, will raise an error. Okay, and hence we need to create another constructor with parameters that will match to these parameters. So let's create another constructor. Okay, so here we have to add one more parameter and is designation of employee. Okay, so designation. Okay, and here employee name equals to employee underscore name okay and here employee I designation of employee and here declare one more variable and its designation okay now print value of employee two object same as that of employee one object okay now let's run the code now see here we got an expected result without any error okay now see here i want just basic information of employee one that's why i have put here two parameters employee name and employee id okay but for employee two i want designation also that's why i have put here three parameters employee name employee id and designation of employee okay now see here in future i decided to add phone number of some of those employees okay so for that what we can do we cannot change existing parameterized constructor because if we change the existing parameterized constructor then you will have to change at all places where you have used that constructor right and it will be lengthy and complicated in case of big application so instead of doing this we can simply create new parameterized constructor having fields that you want to add so basically this is one benefit of having constructor overloading is backward forward compatibility that means we can create any number of constructor as per our needs right so basically constructor overloading provide us backward forward compatibility so for employee 3 i want to add phone number of employee okay and name of employee suppose it's l m n okay so let's create one more constructor with parameters that will match with these parameters because we cannot change the existing parameterized constructor okay so let's create and here we have to write phone number and here name of employee okay employee name so here employee underscore name okay and here we need to declare one more variable and it's int phone number okay now see here we have created total three constructor in a class so if you want to add basic information of some of those employees then you can call this constructor okay and if you want to add designation of some of those employees then you can call this constructor and if you want to add phone number of some of those employees then you can call this constructor okay now see here we have create more than one constructor in a class having same name but different parameters and it's nothing but the constructor overloading clear now let's print values of employee 3 object same as that of employee 1 and employee 2 object okay now let's run the code now let's see what will happen now see here we got an expected output now see here employee 1 has different fields with its corresponding values employee 2 has different fields with its corresponding values and employee 3 also has different fields with its corresponding values that means all employees are in different form right and it is possible only because of constructor overloading that means we can create an object in a different form or let's say we can initialize an object in different way and it is possible only because of constructor overloading okay so basically constructor overloading provide us flexibility to create the object in a different forms and this is a main purpose of constructor overloading in java so basically there are two purposes of constructor overloading in java so first it provide flexibility to create different form of same object and second it provide backward forward 
compatibility okay so this is all about constructor overloading now i am going to end this session so keep learning and thank you so much for watching